Hello and welcome once again to another lesson on the Acts of the Apostles or the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. As we finish up Acts 2, 42 to 47 today, I do know that um, this is a longer section that I'm finishing with because I'm going to actually be doing verses 44 through 47. But it's because we've already talked about a lot of this in what was above, because this is sort of a reiteration and perhaps even an explanation of the earlier part. So let me read this to you, and then we'll, we'll pray. So, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Well, Father, <clears throat> help us once again to hear this, your word. Help us to be moved by it and help us to perhaps think about how we could order our lives in a way that would perhaps be closer to what we see here in the life of the early church so that more than anything, your spirit could be more evident in our meetings and in our lives. Lord, I'm not sure how to make this happen in today's world, but I know that you know. So give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we come to this passage, um, we, we come to that um, fellowship, that koinonia, that, that sharing together of all things. And here's how it happened. They were together, first of all. They, they spent time together daily. They spent time together and they had their things in common so that if someone needed housing, they were provided housing. If someone needed food, they were provided food. If someone needed clothing, there was clothing made available. There was, a, there was an ordering there that um, according to some levels of Greek philosophy and, and Greek relationships and community lives, you know, they're talking about if, if it's your friend, if it's your brother, then it, what's yours is theirs. And there's this idea, and there are some commentators and some um, people that think, well, this is just, it didn't really happen this way. This is just an idealized thing. But we do that to excuse ourselves. We, we call this an idealized way of living to let ourselves off the hook so that we don't have to answer to this level of compassion, this level of love and sharing and community, especially for those of us in the United States of America, a very individualistic group. So we kind of dismiss it, but we shouldn't. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And so, you know, this, if you had stuff that you didn't need, you, you could sell it for the benefit of the good of the whole if there wasn't enough to take care of everyone. And we'll see that in later in Acts with Barnabas, there will be an illustration of this. And then we'll see it in its negative form where someone does it under a sense of compulsion or wanting to make themselves look good and the, the punishment of God that falls upon them for that because this isn't supposed to be about us. It's not supposed to be about how we look or how people talk about us. It's just supposed to be a part of the community life. Um, and so they were selling their possessions and distributing and day by day they were attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes and they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. So you can see they were together. There was a sense of community and oneness among them where they were a family and they took care of each other. 
they worshiped together and they ate together daily, not, not just once a week, but on a regular routine basis. And again, I don't know how to make this happen. I don't know how we do this in our world today, but I do know that in times of persecution especially, knowing that you have the support of a body around you, a family that's going to walk beside you and care for you is hugely important. And so I think in the life of the church, this is going to become ever more important, especially for us in the United States. We have not experienced persecution or trial and tribulation that much. I think those days are going away, and we're going to need to come together and support each other more because some of us may end up losing our jobs and our incomes and things of that nature for the name of Jesus Christ, and, and we'll have to help each other more than we are accustomed to. So, you know, this, this idea of living many commentaries, many Bible scholars want to idealize it. They want to push it away and say it never really happened. John Wesley says this, that to say that the Christians did this only until the destruction of Jerusalem is not true, for many did it long after. Not that there was any positive command for doing it. It didn't need it to be commanded. The command was to love, for love constrained them. It was natural fruit of that love wherewith each member of the community loved every other as his own soul. And when you love deeply, you're willing to sacrifice and give up some of yours, quote unquote, i.e. for the good of the others. And if the whole Christian church, he goes on, had continued in this spirit, this usage must have continued through all ages. To affirm, therefore, that Christ did not design it, did not authorize it, that it should not continue, is neither more nor less than to affirm that Christ did not design this measure of love should continue. <laughs> Well, we all know that that's not true. What, what is the greatest command? To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor is ourselves. So we have to realize that this is what God would want us to do. If we have brothers or sisters in need, if we have brothers or sisters who are struggling, we should strive to rally around them and help them. We do this for missionaries, you know, where we send money and, and support and aid to missionaries. We send it, we do it through compassionate ministries and making crisis care kits and things of that nature. But what about the local body, you know? And, you know, I, I realize it's hard. We're, we're always going to be concerned with, well, you know, are they really doing their best? Are they working you know, and the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. And, you know, there's all these things. But if love were truly to constrain us, love for God and love for one another, then to see a brother or sister in need would to feel that need would be to feel that need personally and want to help if we could. So no, this isn't communism. It's not enforced. It's not the apostles ordering things so that everybody surrenders all of their land, all of their possessions, all of their stuff. It, has, it is not communism at all. It is love. It is love expressing itself in concern and care for each part of the body. We could do a better job of loving in that way, the tangible ways. And, and I'm challenged by that. Maybe you are too. So may God grant us wisdom to know how to better organize ourselves so that we can do what he would have us to do. Father God, help us to be loving agents who care for the body of Christ, even as you care for us to be willing to surrender and sacrifice things for the good of others. And Lord, help us to realize that in doing that, we have the blessed privilege of making your spirit visible in our gatherings. Help us to be better at doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, the good news is we're going to move on to chapter three. So God bless until next time.